back at point C now, and what we're going to talk about here real briefly is looking at point C as a free body diagram. So at C, what I've got is I've got my point. I have 500 pounds coming down into it from on top. That's the weight. I have 500 pounds from the vector CE pulling away. I have some unknown quantity, CB, going down. And I also have some unknown quantity, AC, going out. And this becomes a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple vector math here. And let's take a quick look at first in the direction in X. And let me do the summation of the forces at C and X have to equal to zero. So what I have is I've got a minus AC plus a positive 500 pounds have to equal to zero. Therefore, I can say that AC is equal to 500 pounds, and that is by my diagram pulling to the left. So let me go ahead and update my master diagram. So what I have is a 500 pound pulling in. That makes perfect sense. So now we've solved this 500 pounds, and I'll write that up here in green. Now let's look at CB. I see something wrong here with CB, and I can fix it right now, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna come in here and say that my summation of forces in the y direction have to equal to zero. And by the way I've drawn my current diagram right here, what it shows is I've got a minus 500 pounds coming down from on top. It's this one up here. And plus a minus CB, the way I've drawn it, has to equal to zero. Now I put a negative on it because I show it going down in this diagram. And I just want to show you if you make a mistake on the force direction because I haven't made one so far. Uh, but if you make a mistake and you get a negative number, what that means. So in this instance, when I solve for CB, what I get is CB is equal to a minus 500 pounds. All that means is the vector that I drew down here is magnitude of minus 500. That's the same as saying this vector at 500 pounds. So it just means that I drew my vector backwards. So all I got to do is reverse my vector. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse my vector and update it. So now I can come over and I can update my diagram. And it's 500 pounds. It's my vector CB. And it's up. And it has to be going down on the other side of the member or it's going to be moving. And I've solved for all my forces at C. Next up, let's solve for the forces at A. Okay, last one here. We're over at A. Well, it won't really be the last one, but when we find the vector from A to B, we're going to have all the forces at B as well. So let's look at A real quick here. And uh, I can say that at A, the summation of the forces in the x have to equal to 0, and the summation of forces in the y have to equal to zero. So both those have to be true. So let's draw a quick free body diagram. Here's my point A. And I know I just found in my prior step that I've got the vector AC, and that's 500 pounds. Pulling to the right, I have the vector of the weight at point A, 500 pounds going down. And I now also have the vector AB. And I don't know what that is. But I do know that I can make my vector AB into components. And let's talk about this right now. Though I've drawn that as an arrow going down. And the question is, why down? And if I was going to make a vector out of this, what you'd see is I'd have to go over to the right and then down. And if I look back here at my 
premise that the forces have to sum in 0, x, and y, I can plainly see that this vector is backwards. So I'm going to fix that really quick, and I'm just going to do that in red. I'm going to say, you know what, this vector needs to be in that direction. Before I do any math, I know that. And then my component needs to come over and up to make that vector. So we're going to call these two vectors a, b, y, a, b, x. Awesome. So let's look at, uh, first of all, in the summation forces in the x direction. So we'll go back to green here, and I'm basically going to say the summation forces in the x direction uh, have to equal to zero. Therefore, I have 500 pounds acting to the right, right there. And I have a negative a, b, x acting to the left. That has to equal to zero. So what I can say is a, b, x then has to equal to 500 pounds. That's pretty neat to know. So let's write that in. That's equal to 500. Now similarly what I can say is I could do some trigonometry here or I could just do the vectors uh, of, the, of the problem and say uh, in the dir y direction the sum of my forces have to equal to zero and what I have is I have a minus 500 pounds of weight going down plus and it looks like a b y is a positive going up that has to equal to zero therefore I can say that a b y is equal to 500 pounds and that is up and this was right. Now, two different ways I could find the uh, vector AB. Uh, the easiest way to do it is Pythagorean theorem. And what I essentially have now is I've got a triangle and it looks like this. Here's 500 and that's supposed to be up. That's 500 that's supposed to be over. Uh, whoops, sorry. Did that backwards. Let me erase that. Try that again. Uh, what I meant to say was I've got a triangle that looks like this, so that's 500 over and 500 uh, up. And here is my hypotenuse. And what I can say is this, this is 500 and that's 500. I could do the a squared plus b squared equals to c squared and find my hypotenuse. And if I do that, what I've come up with is 500 pounds squared plus 500 pounds squared equals to c squared and just take the root of the entire thing equals to c and I get that equals to about 707 pounds again we're not going to go to crazy decimal places so that's probably the easiest way to do it you could also do it with trigonometry uh, and you could do it with relationship either one and you could say that uh, in this instance with this being theta and I'll show you how to do that I could just as well say that the uh, sine of theta is equal to my opposite over the my hypotenuse and I'd isolate and solve for my hypotenuse or I could go the cosine of theta is equal to uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse and I could solve for the hypotenuse, and I'd get the same answer anyway. So I just chose to do that. So I've got 707 pounds, so let me write that in. And uh, the way that I've drawn the 707 pounds, it is pushing up right here. Therefore, it's pushing out the other way, 707 pounds. So now let's walk through this real quick. Because my arrows are pushing out in both directions, I'm in compression. In this instance, I am again pushing out in compression. Pulling in here, that's in tension, in tension, and in tension. And I've solved all of my problems, and zero doesn't really matter what that is. So hopefully that helped. You'll see if you're uh, systematic as you go through this. And my best advice to you, no matter how complex the truss is, is first solve for a zero total moment of the entire truss structure. Find your reactionary forces on that truss. After that, find 
zero total external forces in the X and the Y directions. You should have all your external forces. Then choose the simplest node and work your way through the simplest joint uh, in your truss system. Using trigonometry, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching.